Good evening and welcome to Hard Fire. My name is Mark Axon. It's my pleasure to be your host tonight. There's been tremendous interest in both the libertarian movement and in general media in the Ron Paul for President campaign. Tonight, we're going to discuss this exciting campaign with Avery Knapp, who, like Dr. Paul, is a physician and a strict believer in the Constitution and limited government. Avery, welcome to Hard Fire. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. All right, let's get right into it. Tell me, please, what is the appeal of Dr. Paul, not only to libertarians, but to Americans in general? Well, I think Americans in general are sick of the system the way it is. You've got the Republicans on one hand overspending and the Democrats overspending as well. Welfare, warfare, they're looking for change. Dr. Paul represents that change. He represents a return to sound monetary policy, fiscal conservatism, and a traditional Republican foreign policy. That's why people are excited about him. And when did you first become involved in his campaign? I found out about Dr. Paul back in January, and it took me a few months before I actually got involved here in Manhattan with the campaign, uh, about April or May of uh, this year. Can you tell us some of the events that you have helped to organize in New York? Sure. We do all sorts of events. We do uh, outreach at gun shows. Uh, there was an NRA meeting here, alternative medicine groups. Uh, we do outreach at uh, places like uh, Grand Central Station and Union Square, anywhere where there are potential voters and supporters. You know, last night we had a big event at the uh, Young Republicans uh, um, annual or straw poll, first ever straw poll, the first straw poll in New York. We won it, actually. Uh, so we're out there, you know, getting the word out. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Um, it, yeah, it was exciting. You know, it, it was actually in Giuliani's home turf. Uh, Giuliani announced his mayoral uh, run from the Metropolitan Club where it was held. So it was very exciting to beat him on his own turf. What events have you got planned for the next coming weeks and months? Well, this weekend, we're, there's a big trip to Philadelphia, a big rally out there. where We take trips out to New Hampshire often, um, so uh, that's exciting to go out there. It's an early primary state. It's key that we win it, uh, and I think actually Dr. Paul is going to win that. And w what's the response been in New Hampshire? Increasingly more so. They just did a $1.1 million ad buy um, uh, for television, and so as his name recognition is increasing, his support is increasing dramatically, and it's really refreshing. They like him on health care. He's the only doctor who's running. They like him on fiscal conservatism. He's the only fiscal conservatism, and they like his uh, stance on the war. They like the fact that he's returning to traditional Republican foreign policy of non-intervention and non no nation building. Stop policing the world. We just can't afford it anymore. Well, we'll talk about Dr. Paul's policies in a moment. Um, just curious what you're doing here in New York. Um, have you gotten any media coverage in uh, New York City? Uh, did I see your picture in the New York Sun? Uh, perhaps. I'm, I'm told that, you know, I, I, a doctor just came up to me today at work and he said, hey, I heard you were on NPR the other day. I was like, okay, great. <laughs> uh, for coverage for the straw poll that we won here. Um, yeah, we get some press. We made the uh, uh, New York Times blog on the, online. Uh, we had some Ron Paul signs on, in New York Times also this week, uh, NPR, Washington Times Online, all sorts of online coverage in New York Post, uh, New, York, um, uh, Daily, uh, New York Daily News, and the uh, City Hall Press, did, did just City Hall News, pardon me, did a very uh, positive article about our efforts here in Manhattan. It's, it's, it's exciting. Well, that's great. Yeah. How about fundraising? I know that you guys had a banner day uh, on November 5th, Guy Fawkes Day for our viewers, when you raised over $4 million in just one day. Congratulations. How about that? How about that? Uh, a record for Republican fundraising uh, in, in history, uh, all done by grassroots supporters. It's really remarkable. It's not put out by the campaign, and that's what, what, what Dr. Paul's campaign speaks to. It's, it's grassroots support supporters like, uh, like, like me um, who are out there uh, supporting the guy uh, and, uh, and, and donating money in, in, in big ways. You know, his average do donation was $100, $102, I think it was. 30,000 30, people, I think, uh, 35,000 people donated. It's, it's really remarkable. Is that mostly through the Internet? It's all, that was all through the Internet. I think they raised an extra 10% on, 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 uh, through checks and, and mail. Now, you mentioned the New York State straw mm -hmm. poll, and of course, uh, you had phenomenal uh, following in that. But how about other polls? How about the main, main line polls? What's happening there? He, he's increasing. He's up to 7% in New Hampshire. He's up to 5% nationally. And this is for a guy that most people hadn't heard of just a few months ago. It, the, if you look at the slope of the curve, it's dramatic. He's on his way up, and the other candidates are on their way down. 
Well, let's talk about why they haven't heard of him. Ron Paul's been in Congress for 20 years, mm -hmm. um, but he doesn't really fit into the Republican establishment, does he? I, I imagine they probably don't like his stance on the war, for example. Well, some do, some don't. Some are opening up to uh, his stance on the war, which is to bring the troops home, that we shouldn't be involved in uh, internal affairs of other countries and, and nation building. We just can't afford it, either in terms of lives or, or money. Uh, you know, they talk about the Iraq war costing $1 trillion. That's uh, $3,000 for every man, woman, child in America. That's a lot of money. So Republicans are waking up to his message. They're returning to the Republican roots of traditional, form, re traditional Republican foreign policy that Dr. Paul has been speaking about throughout his career. Uh, that's refreshing to me. Uh, he's also a fiscal conservative, so he's returning to the traditional Republican uh, domestic policy as well. It's limited government, limited federal government, which I know we both like. And uh, he wants to. F he follows the Constitution. Uh, he's out there talking about the Constitution. No other candidate is doing that. And of uh, course, in George Bush, if we were to be charitable, uh, he's been a, a great disappointment uh, in. 2000, he basically ran against nation building, against foreign intervention, against you know bloating the budget, and you know the last six years, uh, almost seven years, have been exactly that. Yeah, it, uh, it, it's, it's been very a, disappointing. It has been. I voted for him tw uh, twice. No, uh, that was a mistake. <laughs> but <laughs> you perhaps have a chance to more so the now. <laughs> perhaps more so the second time. But that's why we're we're out there supporting Dr. Paul. Uh, the point is, traditional Republicans like him, independents like him, Reagan Democrats like him. Of course, the libertarians like him. And uh, it, it's exciting. Um, uh, I think uh, he has a tremendous amount of independent support in states like New Hampshire and Iowa, uh, and, and uh, we're increasing uh, support nationwide. Avery, I had the uh, pleasure of voting for Dr. Paul for president in 1988. Mm -hmm. Probably you were not old enough to vote yet at that point. But, um, I think it was nine. Had, <laughs> nine. I'm a little bit older. It's a libertarian <laughs> candidate for president. Yes. But he's made it pretty clear that he's not seeking the libertarian nomination. Right. As a libertarian, why should I support uh, Ron Paul? Or why should any libertarian support him as opposed to the dozen uh, individuals who are all seeking the LP uh, candidacy. Well, Ron Paul thinks third parties are great. The problem is the system is set up against them. Uh, that's one of the reasons he's not seeking the Libertarian Party. You know, the Republicans and Democrats, they basically reached an agreement where we're going to be the major parties and we're going to exclude. It takes a tremendous amount of energy and effort, I, I know you know this personally, to get on the ballots in states like New York and, and around the country. So that's one of the reasons I think he's not. He's also re representing a traditional Republican foreign policy, the policy that Ronald Reagan used to talk about. Uh, you know, Reagan said that uh, conservatism at its heart is libertarianism, and I, I tend to agree. With Dr. Paul is speaking to that. That's that's one of the reasons he's he's running in the Republican mantle. He's a lifelong Republican, even though philosophically he's a libertarian. I tend to consider myself the same way, uh, and he's a constitutionalist. There are a few issues, though, where Dr. Mm -hmm. Paul would differ with most libertarians. Uh, for example, um, what what would you say to someone like me who feels that his policy on um, on uh, uh, opposing freedom of movement across borders, mm -hmm. for example, that policy, which uh, some people say is, well, we shouldn't have open borders, but I, on the other hand, would say that we shouldn't restrict individuals who want to come to this country, contribute to this country, be part of this country, and just have these arbitrary rules and blockades up. Uh, Dr. Paul has come out pretty strongly in favor of, of closing the borders. He, well, he's not in closing the borders, but what he wants to do is secure our borders here in America, not the borders in Iraq. And he's the only Republican who's talking to that. He's the only Democrat. I mean, he's the only uh, candidate on either side of the aisle who's talking to that. Uh, uh, it, in an ideal world, it sounds great if people could be able to cross borders. The problem with uh, that today is that is subsidies. When you subsidize something, you get more of it. One of the reasons that illegal immigration is a problem here in America is that uh, it's subsidized. You know, people can come to this country, get free health care, education, other benefits, uh, welfare benefits. Citizens of the United States do that too. In fact, I think some of the studies that I've seen actually show that um, U.S. citizens tend to partake of those services in greater numbers than uh, immigrants, perhaps because the immigrants are afraid that their status is, is suspect. But wouldn't really the uh, solution to that be uh, doing away with the welfare state? Rather than rather than uh, putting up a wall around between Mexico and Texas. That's exactly Dr. Paul's policy. Is that if you want to get rid of this, you can't get rid of it through the military. Although that's one aspect of it, you got to eliminate the subsidies, uh, and that's exactly what he talks about: eliminating these uh, ridiculous subsidies uh, that uh, that uh, are costing America too much. 
Another area where li many libertarians differ with Dr. Paul and many Americans question is his position on um, reproductive rights and, and abortion. Um, as I understand his position, and uh, particularly as a libertarian, mm -hmm. it appears that what he really is saying is that it's just simply not a role, f a, a legitimate function for the federal government to be involved in. It's a local decision and that the federal government should not be legislating or funding this private uh, situation between a woman and her and her physician. Right. Is that correct? Absolutely. He, re he adopts the traditional Republican uh, policy on this as well. Uh, nowhere in the Constitution does it authorize Congress to regulate uh, abortion. Uh, that being said, Dr. Paul is firmly pro-life. Uh, but the fact of the matter is the executive branch, which is what he's running for and hopefully going to win, uh, it, it's not really a function of the executive branch to tell people in different states what how how they can best manage their laws, for example, against murder or any other crime. Uh, so he, he's really a traditional Republican in, in that sense as well. That he believes you know, states should have rights and states have the obligation to enforce laws like abortion and, 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 and other laws. So what if a state were to make abortion illegal? Well, uh, one-size-fits-all policy doesn't work in America. We don't like it in education. We don't like it in, uh, in, on the abortion issue. If you know, states want to make a, a abortion illegal, uh, uh, that's... Dr. Paul's posi position, as I understand it, is without, un without the right to life, you can't have liberty. A fr true for free society, uh, one of the, the basis of it is the right to life uh, and the right to, to, to other rights as well. Uh, without uh, the right to life, it's very difficult, uh, if not impossible, for society to truly be free. Dr. Paul speaks to that effect. Um, that's why he's, he's firmly pro-life, and that's why a lot of the traditional Republicans support him on this. They're also, in the Libertarian Party, uh, it's my understanding there's a split, there's a pretty big split in terms of whether or not, uh, you know, uh, women the have a right to, to, the to, to choose. The Libertarians for Life yeah. movement is about a third, actually. A third, okay. About a third, which okay. is... Significant. Probably, it's very right. significant. It's and a in difficult fact, issue. pretty much mirrors the American population on this. It's, it's a very volatile issue, which divides Americans, divides Libertarians, divides Republicans, divides Democrats. It's a difficult issue. What's right for New York may not be right for other states like uh, Iowa or, or Alabama. And uh, Dr. Paul believes firmly in the Constitution, and, and Congress has, has no right to regulate this. Let's talk about the generation gap for a moment. Uh, Dr. Paul is 72, I believe, mm -hmm. yet he has tremendous appeal with a number of young voters, uh, people just out of grad school, just out of medical school, law school, people uh, right out of college. Mm -hmm. uh, he seems to be very, very successful on the Internet, which, of course, is the medium of tends to be the medium of younger people mm -hmm. over older people, although um, I had a grandmother who used the Internet all the time, so uh, you never know. Um, what do you think is the appeal of this older gentleman, and why in particular to so many young people? Well, as George Will said, he's a true maverick. Uh, he's the only maverick who's out there talking about uh, uh, a return to the Constitution. I think he's the only candidate who mentions the Constitution more than uh, occasionally. Young people like this. They like new ideas. They like the idea that they don't have to pay oppressive taxes for the rest of their lives. They like the idea that they can have individual ownership of their own retirement instead of a, a broad one-size-fits-all social security policy. Uh, apparently, on campuses, Dr. Paul's biggest line of applause is when he talks about monetary policy. You know, it's, maybe students are waking up to, to economics and understanding free market principles. And uh, that when the government continues to spend, 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 as this administration and this Congress has done, that it creates trouble, it creates problems. And one of the problems is runaway inflation, as we're having. Dr. Paul wants to return to sound monetary policy and, and fiscal conservatism. And, and these are uh, uh, reasons I think that young people and old people alike both support him. Well, you just mentioned this Congress, and that's mm. another great disappointment, is that with a Republican president and a Republican Congress, I think for the first five and a half years there were no vetoes, and uh, one or the other acted as a rubber stamp for the other one. And there was simply no restraint. As uh, all the things that that one may have criticized Clinton for, in fact, at least at that time, with a Republican Congress and a Democrat in the White House, you had a bit of gridlock. Gridlock is good for America. When you have uh, both both Congress and the presidency under the same uh, with the same philosophy, the same statist, you know, uh, deficit spending. Mm -hmm philosophy, that's where we run into a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. But Ron Paul isn't really well received within his own party hierarchy, unfortunately. Um, after 20 years, he seems still to be somewhat of an outsider. I think that 
changed on November 5th when he re when Repo traditional Republicans realize that he is a traditional Republican and that he has the ability to win hearts and minds like no other candidate out there. Uh, he's going to wake up this Republican establishment. He's going to wake up Bush, and, and hopefully they will change things. You know, speaking of Congress, you, you mentioned Nancy Pelosi wants to go to a, you know, a three-day work week. I think this is fantastic. I think Congress should go to a, a one-day work week and really think about the bills before they maybe read the bills, get a chance to read the bills before they actually vote on them. There are some read that the they print them up at 2 in the morning and they're voting the next yeah, day, yeah. And, and, they're, and they're yay thick. And so how about no as, as, as Dr. Paul does, which is read the Constitution before voting on the bill? I think a lot of these uh, congressmen and, uh, need a lesson in the Constitution and a uh, lesson in economics, certainly. And uh, I think Dr. Paul is just the guy to deliver that message. Is that, is that why he's known as Dr. No? It's one of the reasons, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. How can our viewers get involved in the Ron Paul campaign? Well, uh, first thing I would do is research the, his policies. I think most viewers out there will like his policies. Uh, RonPaul2008.com is the website. Uh, or you can just Google Ron Paul is the easy way to get to it. Uh, we here in New York have a, have a website. It's NY4, uh, the Arabic numeral 4, RonPaul.com. That's NY4, RonPaul.com. Or just go to meetup.com and type in Ron Paul and join whatever local, you type in your zip code and you join whatever local meetup group you, uh, is there and, and get active. How Spread many, the message. How many people are involved in the meetup group here in New York City? Oh, uh, something like 850 as of last count. And, you know, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if I went home to Day and it's 900. It's really remarkable. And it started May, May 15th and in just a few short months, uh, uh, grown tremendously. And it's going to continue to grow. And if the viewers would like to get involved in the Libertarian Party as well, particularly any of the activities in the Manhattan Libertarian Party, please visit our website at manhattanlp.org. And there you will find information both about the Manhattan Libertarian Party and links to the National Party, the State Party, and various other um, activities of interest. Again, that's www.manhattanlp.org, the official website of the Manhattan Libertarian Party. Avery, we have a few minutes left. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about what a Ron Paul presidency would look like. It would look like a, a return to traditional re Republican foreign policy. He would, first thing, one of the first things he would, said he would do is bring the troops home. You know, we have troops all over the world. We can't afford it anymore. With that amount of money that we can save in, in, in that way, not to mention the lives lost uh, every day, uh, we could do some things such as cut taxes, cut the income tax. In fact, he's the only candidate who talks about eliminating the IRS, which is burdensome uh, taxes of 30, 40 percent or more. Uh, and the Democrats, of course, want to uh, increase them. Well, Dr. Paul is the only true conservative, fiscal conservative, who wants to decrease decrease them, in fact, eliminate the IRS. But what would we do with all those homeless people out on the streets, nobody to take care of them? Well, if the, the government nanny state weren't there to protect them? Well, the fact of the matter is, is that, is that no, homelessness would I increase. In fact, if anything, it's government policy that creates homelessness with this uh, housing boom that uh, the Federal Reserve has helped to create. Uh, Dr. Paul wants to change that. He believes that charities should take care of, of such things. And when you have a strong economy, things like that don't happen as much. And it's the role of charity and individuals to help out, not the role of the government and uh, uh, taking money from one group and giving to other groups. That's how you get lobbyists. We need to eliminate lobbyists. Dr. Paul, interestingly enough, I don't believe he's ever been taken out to lunch by a lobbyist. It wouldn't surprise me. He actually eats his own uh, he heats his own uh, soup up every day. Lobbyists just don't want to take him out to lunch because they know that he's going to say no to the lobbyists. I understand he's also declined to uh, take the federal pension that I think yeah. the uh, yeah. all of the congressmen uh, and and yeah. the other other uh, federal bureau bureaucrats are able to participate in that largesse at our expense, yeah. of course, because the taxpayers are picking that up. He has a consistent message of fiscal conservatism and returning to sound. Uh, traditional Republican foreign policy of non-intervention and no nation building. That's why he's, he's catching on. All right, tell me some more things that uh, would happen under a Ron Paul presidency. Okay. In particular, um, again, the scare tactics are, are always things like, oh, he's going to cut out Social Security and, and all the elderly people who are relying on that much check are going to be unable to make their mortgage payments or the utility payments mm -hmm. or or pay for their prescriptions, et cetera, et cetera. Well, uh, Dr. Paul, first of all, understands health care, which is a major problem uh, in America. He understands from the bottom up as a doctor himself. 
uh, he believes in free market solutions to the problem. What kind uh, of doctor is he? He was an OBGYN, delivered 4,000 babies down in Texas. And, I understand uh, that he met, he met a woman in um, New Hampshire and, who said she would vote for him, and he delivered her. He said oh, he, really? He, he, Wouldn't he, surprise yeah, me. 4,000 yeah. people. That's great. I'm sorry. I interrupted no. you. Uh, Social Security. He believes that we... Uh, Government has made a, a, a promise to old people, uh, to people nearing retirement and already retired, that we're going to continue uh, to uh, to help those people out. But allow young people to get out of the uh, oppressive 12% extra tax uh, and own their own retirement savings accounts. Uh, Dr. Paul supports that. He supports uh, limitless uh, medical deductions, so you can buy your own health insurance. Uh, individuals can get the same rates that uh, that businesses can. So he's strong on health care, he's strong on education, he's strong on, you know, what previously were, you know, Democrat issues, uh, Democratic uh, Party uh, issues. He's going to, that's why he has a very good chance to win states like Iowa, New Hampshire, and, and the early primaries. All right, are the, and we had talked already about support within the young Republican movement, et cetera. Are, is there support from Democrats as well? Absolutely. Uh, I'd say 20, 30 percent of our supporters here in Manhattan are, are, are Democrats. Uh, or, or higher, uh, you know, he reaches out to people who have never been involved in politics before, such as myself, uh, and 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 plenty of others, and and he so he reaches truly a bipartisan guy, uh, reaches across the aisle. Uh, you know, the other candidates talk it, talk about it, but he has novel ideas that both Democrats and Republicans say, hey, I, I kind of like that guy. Uh, I kind of like uh, I like that issue that he, you know, even Tom Cruise the other day thanked him for uh, talking about uh, uh, when he was on the Leno show, uh, mm -hmm. Jay Leno show, the Tonight Show. Uh, thanked him for um, refusing to uh, support forced mental health screening of children. You know, he, he has issues for everyone that everyone supports. Yeah. A lot of people support. And what can our viewers do to uh, help get us there? Well, I think, you know, first research. Research him. Maybe read the Constitution. Go online. Research him. Research the other candidates. That's why uh, the Internet is such a powerful tool, is that people have the power in their own hands to research these things. And what was that website again? Uh, uh, we have two. Uh, one is meetup.com, is a good website to go to. But uh, go to Ron Paul's actual website, ronpaul2008.com, or just Google Ron Paul. You'll find out uh, all about him and, 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 uh, and be, become a supporter. Oh, YouTube, he's very popular on YouTube. Go listen to him speak for six minutes. Watch him in the next Republican debate when he dominates the other uh, Republicans and uh, how the neocons have hijacked foreign policy in, the, uh, in this country. Uh, that's why he's catching on. Well, let me ask you, within the Republicans, though, wouldn't many uh, Republican voters say, well, if I don't vote for Giuliani or Romney or one of the two or three leading candidates, I don't know, it's Thompson in the lead now, mm -hmm. I, I don't know, it changes from day to day, but I'm just wasting my vote. And of course, as a, as a libertarian, for 20 years I've heard, I'm wasting my vote, you know. It's, right. If I if I don't vote for you know they hold their nose I'm voting for the lesser of two evils or well, the lesser of two evils is evil yeah. but in the case of the of the primary when your focus as as or the focus of the Republicans is uh, to do whatever we can to stop Hillary or stop uh, it's most likely going to be she but to stop whoever the Democratic candidate mm -hmm. is w wouldn't the push within the Republican establishment be to get behind whoever they perceive as the front runner and to basically tell everyone else to take, you know, to take a hike because Ron Paul's detracting from Giuliani. It's going to hurt Giuliani when he runs against Clinton or, I, or whatever. I think Dr. Paul actually has the best chance to beat Hillary. He has the best chance to beat any of the Democrats because he draws support from uh, anti-war people. He draws support ac across the aisle. He draws support from independents. Uh, he's the only Republican who can really draw a lot of support from independents. And they're, the Reagan Democrats are crucial uh, to the success of Dr. Paul. They're supporting uh, Ron Paul more and more. And uh, he's going to win uh, state, uh, New Hampshire and hopefully other, other primary states he's catching on. And um, uh, I think he has the best chance to beat Hillary because of his broad appeal across America. People like freedom. People like the idea of limited government. Uh, people certainly like the idea of getting out of Iraq. And, and I do not see how a, any Republican other than Dr. Paul, could possibly win when they continue uh, the same Bush foreign policy of nation building and having troops all over the world. We just can't afford it anymore, and it's time to bring them home. 
what do, what do we have troops in something like 140 different countries? Uh, we, we've maintained a military presence in Korea now for about 65 yeah. years. More every day. And uh, it's, it, you know, now Iraq, too. I add that on the list. Uh, it's time to bring them home. It's time to, to, to take care of them. It's time to secure our borders on the borders of Iraq and return to a traditional Republican foreign policy. Uh, yeah, we just can't afford it. Dr. Paul is the fiscal conservative and he's voted consistently on these issues. That's another reason why people like him. It's that he's not some politician who panders. He d doesn't go out to lunch with lobbyists. They don't want to take him out uh, to lunch. He votes consistently for these principles. He's stood consistently for these principles for 30 years uh, in and out of Congress. And, uh, and, and he's spreading the message of, li of freedom and limited government. And, uh, and it's why it's a really remarkable campaign. We only have a couple of minutes mm -hmm. uh, left. Uh, what, if you, in addition to learning about Dr. Mm -hmm. Paul and, and getting on the websites, uh, if someone wanted to get involved in the campaign, what, what would you recommend to him or her? I would, uh, meetup groups is the way the grassroots has kind of organized itself. Uh, there are a couple of good websites out there, dailypaul.com and ronpaulforums.com. Um, uh, I would go on the local, your local meetup group though and join, get active, go out there, tell people about the message reach out to Republican groups and gun owner groups and homeschoolers and, and the broad, broad coalition of, of support that Dr. Paul is building. Reach out to colleges, uh, uh, you know, reach out to uh, your neighbors, your friends, your family, you know, talk to them. Talk to them about over the Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, you know, the Dr. Paul. Have uh, you managed to bore your family with uh, your activities? I, I managed to get 25 bucks out of my mom the other day. <laughs> Good Got for my, you. My brother's on board. Uh, uh, my sister's a big time supporter here in Manhattan. So. Uh, and they're all in various industries across America, just like the Dr. Paul movement, the Ron Paul Freedom Movement. Well, that's terrific. Yeah. Avery, I want to thank you very much for being with us and sharing with us the good work that both you and so many others are doing to keep this champion of liberty in the public eye. Uh, we also want to thank all our viewers for spending time with us tonight here at Hard Fire, and we hope that you'll be with us again uh, next week when we have the next episode of Hard Fire. We have just another moment left. Uh, is there anything final that you'd want to say to our viewers about the campaign and where you think we're going? Uh, yeah, I think we're going up. I think the other candidates are going down. We're going up. I encourage them to, to go online, talk to local uh, reporters, local news stations, talk to your friends and family, and, uh, and, and support this man and his cause. Uh, he's a good man, good Christian doctor from Texas, and uh, we need him to win. We need change in this country, and he represents the true change. Um, uh, spread the message and read the Constitution, bone up on the ideas, and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and go on the online and find out more about Dr. Paul. Okay, well, once again, Avery Knapp, thank you very much for your time tonight. Thank you, viewers, for spending this evening with us here at Hard Fire. We hope that you'll join us again next week for another exciting edition of Hard Fire. Thank you again. Hard Fire is funded in part by the Libertarian Party of New York. Catering for the cast and crew of Hard Fire is generously provided by Da Vincenzo Restaurant, 256 Prospect Park West, Brooklyn, New York, 11215, 718-369-3590 www.davincenzorestaurant.com